it's nice when you can go to an event, for example, like you and I could be having a meal at lunchtime, then we could be speaking on stage, then we could be chatting on Skype, and we're going to get the same person each time. We're not going to get a, uh, That's right. a, a modified one. There's sometimes when I line up for a podcast and someone puts on their show voice and I'm like, who's yeah. this? Hey. That's not the guy I met <laughs> last time. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. This is Super Fast Business with James Schramko. James Schramko. Helping you build your business super fast. 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 James Schramko here. Welcome back to superfastbusiness.com. Today we are finding out about when is a good time to have your own podcast? You've been listening to this podcast and perhaps a few of my other podcasts. And I'm always interested when I find a serious marketer who's starting a podcast and the curiosity peaks and I want to know why, what caused them to want to start a podcast, what sort of things are involved in that process and what can they learn when they research from other podcasters how they should best get started. So if you fall into that category, you're going to love this show. And today my special guest is Darren Rouse. G'day, James. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. We've bumped into each other a few times uh, at conferences. I've been aware of you for the longest time. I know you had spoken at an underground event and I sort of followed a year or two behind you. I think you've been going at this for maybe 11 years, maybe longer. I think it was 2002 I started blogging, but it, it really didn't become anything more than a hobby until probably a year and a half after that. So yeah, Right, so you've been going for a while. I'm still not even up to the decade mark, so you're an old timer from my perspective. Except in the whole time, you have yet to start the podcast until now. Is that right? That's right. It's, it's purely been blogging, forums, social media, a book and, and e-books really has been the kind of the extent, which I guess is a fair bit, but podcasting is only about to happen for me now. Right. So I'm really interested. I mean, just to, to give the listener some depth to this, you had started problogger.com net it became a like a worldwide super duper blog one of the top ranked sites in the world super famous for amazing content for your, your publishing you've got teams of writers you have great expertise in this and you even transferred that to a photography site you might want to mention that url as well yeah so that's digital dash photography dash school.com which is a horrible url but uh, <laughs> that's a terrible it's, URL. it's living proof that even with the worst url in the world that you can do something reasonably significant it's got about you know four and a half million visitors a month to it so it, it's done okay for me uh, despite the url not bad. So you know a thing or two about publishing online. And your new podcast is going to be at problogger.com forward slash podcast. That's exactly the spot for it. And we'll be transitioning a lot of the .NET stuff over to .com in the, in the coming months as well. Do you think it's important to have a .com version of your domain name? I, I do. I don't think it's essential, and and you know the same with the the digital photography school URL. You can do pretty well with almost anything. I think my philosophy is be useful and and change people's lives, and and with whatever URL you're on, you can you can do well. But it's probably ideal to have it on the .dot com. But unfortunately, it was not available when I first started out, and I had to buy it later on. Right. Now I've always been advising my students to make sure they get into that .dot com nice and early before the their business becomes uh, an obvious cash cow milking exercise for whoever owns the .com. Yeah, that's right. So, Darren, why a podcast now? Look, there's been a number of factors. I, I guess one of them is that I've been nagged into it by many people. We've got mutual friends. Chris Ducker's been on my case for a long time and, and uh, numerous other friends. So that's been one of them. And I think that that nagging started because um, those people have seen me speak and, and they've enjoyed the way that I speak and thought I'd be a natural fit to it. And, and I guess that's the other factor for me is that I love to speak and I get invited to the States to speak a lot, but can't really travel a whole heap because we've got young kids. And, and so podcasting has been something that I've always thought maybe I could exercise some of my speaking, you know, dreams in, in that type of format. And I guess the last factor for me is just I've become addicted to them and I've started walking this year for the first time in a long time an hour every afternoon and and what I'm doing on those walks is listening to podcasts and I'd never really listened to anything more than a few snippets of them in the past but I've very quickly become addicted to listening to podcasts like yours and and 
a variety of others on all kinds of topics and, and really have been impacted them, by them, particularly with my health. I, I've actually been listening to some health podcasts and they've changed my life quite literally and that's what I'm in the business of. I love to you know impact people in that sort of way. So it's, I guess, convinced me of the medium and, and given me a real reason, a personal reason to to want to start it. As I've listened to those podcasts, I've thought, you know, I can't help but think, you know, I could do that. Or I could do that in this way. So yeah, podcast is the next thing. I predict you'll be phenomenally successful with it because you, if you think you're good at speaking, we already know you can write like a machine. So it's just like you're one of those people with probably too much talent for one person. But you have been getting skinnier, so the walking's obviously helping. Walking's helped. I think not stuffing myself with two or three extra meals a day has probably helped a a bit too. (laughs) (laughs) You reckon that's got something to do with it? It's probably done a little bit more to do with it than anything, I think, yeah. So in the past, you've thought maybe you could do this, maybe it's for you. What sort of things do you think held you back from starting it that might be affecting someone listening to this? Sure. I, I think probably number one, it was too many other balls in the air and and just feeling overwhelmed by the thought of having to learn a new skill. I'm not a technical person at all and have outsourced a lot of that in my other parts of my business, but I always like to get my head around it first before I outsource it. And so I just didn't quite have the headspace or didn't think I had the headspace to be able to learn it and then create it because I you know when you start something it takes two or three times as long to do it the first few times but I guess they're just excuses and I've learned a long time when I make a lot of excuses and I keep still having the dream that I've I I kind of have to kick myself in the butt and and just do it sometimes so uh, technical issues is probably the the biggest thing that I thought would hold me back and how have you gone about approaching the technical things as a brand new startup podcast what sort of things have been across your workflow and things that you thought were a challenge and and how did you solve them? Yeah, well, so I went to a conference, Social Media Marketing World in, must have been March in the States and and sat in on a few podcasting sessions there. So just listened to some beginner type tips from that and then just read a whole heap from, you know, other podcasters and there's some great guides online for free that you can kind of, that walk you really through it. And I realized I already had GarageBand sitting on my computer, so I had the tool sitting there. I had a, a podcast, a microphone that I'd won years ago that have used for webinars. So I, I kind of had the the basics in terms of equipment, so there wasn't really anything holding me back on on that way. And then I just decided one day to record one and, and see how it sounded, see how I, it felt, and it felt good, and, and the rest's been history. I think the reality is when you actually get into it, you'll find it's almost nothing easier than podcasting. It's I just use a USB podcaster mic that plugs straight into the computer and yep. I record with a call recorder on Skype and just drag the media into Dropbox afterwards and the team just takes over. They do a little top and tail and load it up. In fact, my main job these days is to just talk for an hour a day and record it and make sure that that's going. That's enough to drive the whole machine. So I'm pretty excited for where you're going to take this when you discover that it's probably the easiest activity you could do of all the things you can do. So that's right. When you're approaching this, Darren, I know that you sent out a questionnaire to some of your close peer group, people who you trust and who you know are getting good results. I'm super curious, what sort of tips did they give you as experienced podcasters? Mm. It was interesting. I, I sent it to about 12 people who had experience with podcasting, some quite well known and some smaller ones as well. And, and the, the feedback was pretty similar. It was along the lines of just do it just release something. It doesn't have to be perfect. And a lot of it was around things like, you know, have two or three episodes in the can before you launch it. So people have got more than one to listen to. Keep momentum up, particularly in the first week or two. Use your email list, use any social channels you've got to promote it and leverage it. It was pretty similar advice from everyone. And I think the main thing was just do it, <laughs> you know, and and that's what I always say to people who are wanting to start blogs as well. You've just got to kind of get it out there and you learn from that process of, of publishing your first one so much. And I've learned so much in just the editing of the first one that I'm now putting into the next episodes as well. So good. And I hope yeah. you have outsourcing editing somewhere high up on your task list. 
Well, that's the next thing for me is now I've got the first few recorded. Well, I've got 31 recorded and, and five edited. Now it's about training someone else to to get that the rest of them up. That's something I took a little bit too long to do and I, I thought it was going to be a challenge and difficult and it couldn't have been easier. I just sat beside my editor and did three podcasts. I did one and then... I watched her do it and gave her coaching on the fly and then I let her do the third one all by herself and listen to it and made a couple of changes and from that point on, and I'm talking hundreds of podcasts ago, I never had to listen to my own voice back again, which is fantastic. Yeah, I can imagine how great that's going to feel. <laughs> it's so liberating because I can assure you when we're finished talking, I'm just going to drag a file into Dropbox and I won't see it again till it's on my website playing for customers. Wow. Now... We've talked about some of the tech stuff and the resistance to getting started. I'm mm. really interested in when it comes to the premise or what your podcast will be about, how did you make some choices around that and what have you decided? To, and I love how you say you've done the first few, like 30-something episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I brainstormed. I, I've got an Evernote file that's sitting on my computer at the moment. I'm looking at it and I brainstormed about 100 episodes on a plane ride back from the States. Uh, so I had quite a while to do it. And a lot of them align pretty well with popular posts that I'd already written on the blog. So I've got the advantage of having a lot of content that I can update for a podcast and, and repurpose, I guess, in some ways to, uh, to, into a podcast. I've also got some ebooks that I've written. And, and one of the things that I did in the early days of ProBlogger was a series of blog posts called 31 Days to Build a Better Blog. And I ran it, I think, in 2007 the first time. And it was the biggest month of traffic I'd ever had. And it was a very simple concept, a little bit of teaching every day, and then a challenge that people could go and do and improve their blog. And it just brought a lot of life to the blog. And I ran it again in 2010, I think it was, or nine. And again, it was a big month of traffic. And, and my readers at the end of that, it was just a free series of posts. They said to me, we want it as an ebook. Can you sell it to us? And um, I was skeptical that anyone would want to buy something that was already on the blog for free, but created this ebook and it sold 10,000 copies in the first couple of weeks and and convinced me that it was a good idea and so I've decided to take that ebook and the the 31 activities that I talk about in that ebook and create a podcast around those so the first 31 episodes come out on a daily basis starting on the 1st of July and exactly the same format as the book a little bit of teaching and then go away and do this and then report back to us what you've learnt. And so that's the, the first 31 days and I've, I've recorded them all. It's just about editing and topping and tailing them now. Fantastic. Yeah, there's a yeah. few ways that you can do it. In, in someone in your position with a body of work already published, you could literally read every single post you've ever typed or had your writers type as a podcast or even engage a podcast personality to be the voice of your site. And what I've found very interesting is whenever I've published information as a podcast, text, and video, there'll always be two to one listens versus views. And mm. there'll be a certain percentage of people who are walking or traveling who can't read doing the activity that, that they're doing, but they can certainly listen. Like if you're rowing a boat down the river or walking along, it's a little bit harder to read without falling over a pothole or something, but it's easy to listen. So you're accessing that whole medium. You could literally open up your best content from the blog over the last decade to people in a different format and they'd love it. Yeah, and that's what I'm I'm hearing back. I asked on my Facebook page the other day what people want and and that theme came through. And I guess the other advantage of having you know, done a lot of conferences and met a lot of people is that the doors are open for conversations like we're having now with people that um, I know would be helpful to my readers. And, and that'll be the other aspect of after the 31 days. It certainly won't be a daily podcast after that, but, you know, one or two times a week interviews, but also that same format of teaching and challenges. I want I definitely want it to be an action orientated type thing that that people go away and do something as a result of of listening. Interviews are great because you can actually invite people on to your show who you'd like to hear from and learn from yourself because there's a good chance if you're interested your audience will be interested as well. Definitely. I'll give you another interesting one which is the recycled one. And this is where 
let's say you're attending my website today as a podcast guest. If you were to run a recorder on your side of the conversation, you could then give that to someone in your team who can transcribe it into some bullets and then you'd be able to create mm. a podcast on how to start your own podcast, what to consider with technology and, and equipment, what sort of show premise is important, what are some of the obstacles and you can actually recycle a guest appearance for your own site as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's something I, I quite often talk to my readers about is the things you do every day that you're not doing for a post or for a podcast, you just got to capture those things. And so setting a recorder while you're talking to someone can be become a blog post, you know, screen capturing something that you do every, you know, 20 times a day could be interesting to someone. So, yeah. Oh, people love behind the scenes, don't they? They'd like to hear <laughs> yeah. on your approach to going to an event and post-event recaps. Yeah. I don't do a coaching call without Evernote open and I'm typing notes. I've literally got in my Evernote call notes from the last six years of high-level coaching. So, there's an unlimited database of topics to talk about. That's gold. You just got to open your mind. It's a mindset, I think. Just everything you're doing could be a post. Now, in your research phase lately, have you seen mistakes that people are doing that they really should fix before they ever create them in the first place? I think there's been a few podcasts that I've of people I really admire. That and one of the things that I I love what well, that frustrates me, I guess, is that when you listen to that first really great podcast and they say, "Well, there'll be another one in two weeks," and you're just like, "Oh." just want another one um, and there's been a couple like that so I, I guess that's something that I'm I guess cognitive of particularly as I'm you know doing a daily show is you know keeping it going I don't know there's different opinions and and length as well is something that I've asked a lot of people about is should they be short or should they be long mine are relatively short but I know others have said no people love the long ones so I guess that's something I, I want to play with and experiment with but I guess it's about listening to your listeners and and seeing what they do with with your content and how they use it and learning from that. Plus, there's a bit of a problem in the podcasting industry that if someone clicks play on a podcast, then that's counted as a download. So download. I would not believe the numbers on some of those three-hour podcasts because the, the reality is very few people can have three hours uninterrupted and I would suggest a lot of them get terminated prior to the end of the podcast. Yeah, for sure. I've actually got podcasts from two or three minutes right through to an hour and a bit and I've found people will accept whatever I put out. It's the funniest <laughs> yeah, thing. That's and right. Sometimes a podcast doesn't need to be an hour long. I've got five different podcast shows and the ones on sales, marketing, profit are pretty much always 25 minutes. There's just no fluff in those at all, no filler, all killer we say. Then there's ones that yeah. I've actually got a podcast with no premise no agenda and virtually no listeners called kicking back and we just talk and it is there's no set <laughs> yeah structure no framework it's just me and my comedian friend and i do it from for my own selfish reasons i love talking to a comedian for an hour yeah and the podcast's a great way to trick him into hanging out with me for an hour <laughs> so i used to have to pay him to come and perform and he's a, he's such a a cool guy so you you really can have that and the funny thing is you'll pick up different listeners depending on uh, I guess what what sort of show you put out there and it sounds like you're going to have a multiple premise show where you're doing different things over the over the journey and you'll probably knowing you pay a lot of attention to the feedback that you get and start modifying it on the fly yeah and that's exactly what I've done with my blog posts and and blogging I found lengthwise it I do both I do mega you know, 6,000 word posts and they do really well. And then we've done, you know, 50 word posts and they've done well as well. I guess it just got to be useful. Well, I think that will reflect across to the audio medium as well for you. Hope so. So let's say we're in a similar position to you where we've got a website or a business, we've got a blog, we've come to the conclusion that uh, podcasts are something we'd like to do. We've got some basic equipment together with i.e. a microphone and a reasonably quiet room and something to record it on we've got an idea about what we might talk about whether we're retrofitting some of our old posts whether we're taking our most successful product and converting to audio or whether we're just lining up some interviews let's see if you and i can come up with a simple checklist of a few things that that really have to be considered in order to get published mm. so what do you think uh, the steps would be from going from your website to having a podcast? 
Well, I've, I mean, some of the things that I've done practically as, you know, artwork for the podcast. So I used 99 designs and, and got one made up fairly cheap and easy. And I've got intros and outros created, some just some basic audio with a little bit of music over the top. Mm-hmm. Um, Where did you get them done? Um, a guy called Abe. Abe's Audio, I think he's called. Uh, so right. a, a South Australian guy. And it was pretty quick and, and easy and, you know, he'd done it before so he knew the sort of stuff to, to create and he's given me some little breaker type things to put in the middle of them as well if I need them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also got 99 designs on as a sponsor so there was some sort of negotiations that needed to happen there which again was relatively quick and I, I guess having an established profile that helped a lot in having a podcast sponsor right from the start but I, I wouldn't say that's an essential thing particularly if you're selling your, yourself or your own products throughout it. Yeah well make sure you send them a link over to this podcast you might get an extra kicker. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> in terms of launching, I've, I've kind of certainly put it out there to, you know, podcasting friends to, to learn from, but also that's also resulted in two or three interviews like this, which has been, you know, really fantastic in helping to, I guess, get the word out, which has been great. But I've certainly developed a bit of a, a launch schedule as well, which I will be, you know, using my email list and the blog that I've got already in social media. So there's a few elements there, I guess, in terms of, of launching it. As well. A site like yours, simply putting a prominent banner on it across the whole site will will steer a lot of traffic into it. Yeah. The other things that happen organically, which are really cool, are once you do pop up, obviously you're going to get to your first thousand listens very quickly. You're going to get new and noteworthy extremely quickly. And then you start popping up underneath other people's shows in related categories. And one easy win is to appear on all the other shows that show up when yours shows up because they have your listener. Right. And they'll be aware of you as well. So that will be fun. Yeah. No, I'm I'm learning so much about, you know, how iTunes works as well and, you know, there's there's delays in getting it up as well. So, you know, you've got to submit a couple of days before you want to be launched and some of those type of things as well. And how will we be hosting the media? So we're using Libsyn, mm-hmm. I think it's called, yep. Lib, Libsyn. And um, another little tool that I've started using today is Orphonic. I don't know if you've come across that. <laughs> well, I actually put guys like Ed Dale onto that many years ago. Oh, cool. I was one of the yeah. early users and it's a miracle. In fact, when I'm traveling, Darren, all I use is an iPhone or an iPad with Orphonic and a lav mic. And mm. That's how I do my podcasts on the road. Even if I'm doing a Skype call... I'll have my Orphonic app and lav mic strapped to my T-shirt and I'll record my side on the, the lav mic and then I'll use the customer's side from the Skype and I'll get a really high quality recording well, from that setup. I still need to look a little bit more into it but I've, I've used it certainly to level out the podcasts that I've done and the, the improvement in the quality just by using their web tools being great. Fantastic. It also works for videos, which mm. some people don't know, but it uh, re- reduces the noise. It'll level out two sides of a conversation mm. and great for uh, barking dogs and noisy kids and stuff. <laughs> and noisy kids who I'll probably have intrude on us in a moment. <laughs> there are little little wins too, like the podcasting mic that I use, which is made by Rode, has a built-in pop filter. And compared to some of the other ones like the Blue Yetis or whatever, this seems to mask out construction work, kids, dogs, or whatever, ocean waves crashing on the beach way better than the other ones which seem to pick up every echo. So things like whether it has dynamic uh, amplifiers or not make a big difference to the quality of the recording. And it's kind of assaulting to your listener to give them a horrible recording quality if you've got the ability to make a good one which is these days very simple to do that's right i think another thing that i've been i've been learning through the recording is not to get too worried about the the stumbles that you make along the way i think in the podcast that i listen to certainly every podcaster i listen to is not a professional radio announcer they make little bumbles and i think a lot of people get caught up in you know taking 40 takes to get their podcast out there uh-huh. and certainly all mine have been one takers and there's there's little stumbles along the way but yeah don't don't let that hold you back i think that would certainly be a tip that i'd be giving people it's a great tip this podcast for example will literally have a bumper put on the front and the back and there'll be, there won't be any edits because we're perfect right 
Exactly, exactly. And if you listen to the radio, they make mistakes as well. So you know, yeah, they certainly do. Oh, there's some been some shocking mistakes, especially from the Australian radio industry. But I remember seeing some guy overseas like killed a rabbit on on live on air or something to make a point and and cooked it up in a stew. So people do make some strange decisions. So by all means, edit those things out. But for the most part, we I think people are attracted to our podcast because they want to find out more about the information and they like knowing a real person is there and and getting to know their true Mm. character and it's nice when you can go to an event for example like you and i could be having a meal at lunchtime then we could be speaking on stage then we could be chatting on skype and we're going to get the same person each time not going to get a uh that's right a, a modified one there's sometimes when I line up for a podcast and someone puts on their show voice and I'm like, who's yeah. this? It's hey. not the guy I met last time. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Look, we've covered a range of topics and the the real thing that I wanted to get across is I wanted to step into that pre podcast phase that you've been through, catch you right at the start, Darren, to see what you've been going through. And I think what would be quite good for my audience at least is to invite you back in a little bit to find out what happened, to see how the first shows went, to see what what you experienced with ratings, with feedback from listeners, whether you now think that it should be long or short, whether you changed any of your equipment, whether you canned the whole thing because it was a mistake, or if you're just doubling down on it. Do you think you'd be able to come back and give us an update? Totally. I I look forward to that as well. And I I think as I'm making them, I'll certainly be jotting down a few ideas and things to share. That would be great. So listen, head over and check out problogger.com forward slash podcast. You've been listening to Darren Rouse, who's been remarkably vulnerable on this podcast, sharing you the deep insider scenario of about to go live on, you know, and look, when you've got 12 or 13 years under your belt and a huge audience, people are definitely going to be paying attention to what you do. So I I know that it takes a lot to share that with us. And I want to thank you for coming and sharing that, Darren. You're welcome. It's been great to chat. Discover how to build your business super fast. Check out superfastbusiness.com. Yeah.